Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will show you how to add and remove items dynamically in the Angular drop-down list, as well as how to reset a selected item. Have a look at this example. You can see a simple Angular drop-down list with a few buttons to perform dynamic actions. When I click this add button, a new item will be programmatically added to the drop-down list. Likewise, if I click the remove button, the item will be removed from the drop-down list. If I want to reset the selected item, I click the clear button. Okay, now I will show you the code snippet to achieve these scenarios using my existing Angular application. Let me open my Angular drop-down list application, where I have added the Angular drop-down list with basic properties. Here, I have bound sport names to the data source and mapped the appropriate data source field to the field's property of the drop-down list. Also, I have set the placeholder property value as select a game. Follow the link provided in the card to learn the basics of adding a Blazor drop-down list to an app. You can also find a reference link in the description below. Now, I will run this example using the command ng-serve. So here, you can see the Angular drop-down list showing sport names. Next, I will show you how to add items dynamically to the drop-down list component using a button control. First, I need to install the button package using the command npm install at syncfusion slash ej2 angular buttons hyphen hyphen save. As I have already installed the syncfusion angular buttons package in my machine, I am skipping this step here. Next, I need to import the button module from the syncfusion ej2 angular buttons package. I also register it within the imports array of the ng module section. Now, I make changes in the app component HTML file by adding the Angular button component with a unique ID inside the division element. I set the button text, add. And then, for a better look, I define a few class and CSS styles for it. So here, you can see the button control rendered beside the drop down list. Now, I will write the logic for adding a new item to the drop down list. I define the click event for the button. I need to access the drop down list component instance, so I add a template reference variable and access it using the view child directive within this app component ts file. Then, I define not null variable named drop down list object of type drop down list component to get the drop down list instances. Also, I imported the view child directive and drop down list component class from an Angular core and its Syncfusion EJ2 Angular dropdowns to access the child component instance. Next, I am going to get the add button element, so I create the variable add button element of type HTML element. Then, I get the add button element using the method get element by ID and assign it to this variable within this on add items event handler. Usually, the newly added item will append to the bottom of the pop-up list. Therefore, I need to make a call to the public method of drop-down list, add item using this drop-down list reference instance, and pass a new object as its argument, like the one in the data source with the same field names, ID, and game. Notice the item value hockey, which I have passed to this game field. Now, look at the output page. When I click the add button, you can see the new item, Hockey is added as the last item in the drop-down list. If I want to add this item as the first item in the list, or somewhere in the middle, then I need to pass the index parameter. I will show you how to add a new item in the first position. To do that, I pass zero as the index value inside the add item method as the second argument separated by a comma. And now, when I click the add button, you can see the pop-up list showing the newly added item first in the list. Next, I am going to show you how to clear the selected item programmatically. Within the app component HTML file, I define one more button and set clear as its text. I then define the click event for this button and add the relevant handler. Next, I need to get the clear button element, so I create the variable clear button element of type HTML element. Then, I get the clear button element using the method get element by ID and assign it to this variable within this on clear items method. 
Next, I set the drop down list selected items value property to null. I then make a call to the data bind method of the drop down list component. Also, I have defined a few CSS styles for it. So now, looking at the drop down list component, if I click the clear button, the selected item is reset. Okay, so far I have shown you how to add and reset items. Now, I will show you how to remove items from the drop down list with a button click event. I define another button with the click event inside the app component HTML file and set remove as its text. Then, I need to get the remove button element. So, let me create the variable remove button element of type HTML element. I get the remove button element using the method get element by ID and assign it to this variable within this on remove items method. Now, I need to get the drop down list data source items. So, within this on remove items method, I make a call to the public method get items of the drop down list using its instance. I want to remove the first item on the list, so I am passing the index value as zero. Then I will remove the item using the JavaScript method remove. To remove the same item from the data source, I will also use the JavaScript splice method. And finally, I will add a condition to check whether the drop down list item's length is greater than one before proceeding to remove any item from it. Also, I have defined a few CSS styles for it. So now, when I click the remove button, you can see the first item in the list is removed. In this video, we have seen how to add new items to the Angular drop down list pop up, reset a selected item programmatically, and remove items. If you would like to see the working example, you can download it from the GitHub link shared in the description below. You can also check if you qualify for our community license, giving you a free license key for our entire Angular suite, with the link in the description. If you found this video useful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.